So um, I'll, to answer your question again, already a little in the beginning, um, I'll keep my presentation pretty broad. And as you can see at it, uh, from the title, my topic is digital addiction. I think it is a topic most of us can relate to. And it has certainly been in the mouth of a lot of people over the years. And um, to start and a little to introduce the topic, I'm, I would like to talk about uh, the move we've seen in the last couple of years and the last century for that matter of being is that a lot of the things we do in our life and a lot of the services and a lot of the work we do has moved from the analog world to the digital. And this is, for instance, as an example of this is what we're doing here today. It's um, taking our lecture from having it in person and in a physical space to the digital world. And as you can see, this um, has a lot of benefits and it brings a lot of um, comfort to our lives. If we didn't have this option 10, 20 years ago, we'd all be sticking around at home and just wishing our semester back. But this way, most of us will still be able to study throughout the semester. And so digital, uh, the digitalization has inherently brought a lot of benefits to all of our lives. But um, also in this move, just to see the scope of this all, there is this little graph I'm showing you now. And this shows you the penetration digi uh, digital media has had in our lives. So you see that around um, 5 billion users um, have mobile devices today. This is an incredible, uh, incredible number if you compare it to our total population, which is roughly getting to 8 billion. And with also having four and a half billion people on the internet, this has connected us over the last century to a degree we've never seen before. And um, the question that arises from these facts pretty quickly is, having all of these digital devices, where do we spend our time and how much time do we spend with them? And I would like to focus more on the younger generation as I think this is the generation that is growing up with all of these new opportunities. They are growing up with almost everything being digital in their world. A lot of kids are introduced to their smartphones at a way earlier age as we do. Looking back, I got my first phone at starting my gymnasium, uh, no, ending my primary school. And it was a flip phone with limited um, capabilities. The most time I'd spend on there would be to play snake. I think a couple of you can relate to that. But uh, nowadays the youth spends their time, as you could see before, way longer on these medias. And to give an overview in what they do, is um, you can see most of their time is really using services that are digital. If it's listening to music on Spotify, watching videos on YouTube or Netflix, um, gaming or using uh, social media and only 3% in both uh, categories account for people doing something themselves and not consuming something. So making digital art, composing music, writing, programming, whatsoever. It is just a really small portion of that time. And this raises the question, is this just a natural evolution of how our world is moving forward? Is just a lot of this analog world being converted into a digital one? Or um, are there other factors keeping us more and more in this digital world? And this raises the um, question if tech companies, mostly the big three are creating an addiction to these uh, digital medias. And um, as we've seen this transformation from analog to uh, digital, a lot of the services were created by 
firms that are seeking profit and they design the environment we we um we live in in that digital space so um, facebook designs their platform they have full control over how it is shaped and what what this uh, environment should um do for us and induce in us more um more importantly and for them pretty much the most important way uh important measure for them is having us having our attention and how to keep it as long as possible as most of you know uh facebook and twitter instagram all of these um services don't require you to pay for them and the way they make money is usually through ad revenue which um only creates value if they have your attention for longer uh, spans of time and so all of these services are in this digital space fighting for your attention basically and there is only a finite amount of time in your day um, you can give and so everyone is trying to get you to stay on their service on their platform as long as possible and in doing so they use a variety of different methods and they have become really really proficient in keeping our attentions there and i think um after pointing out some of these um so-called external triggers they use to keep us on their sites um i'll think you'll find them quite re relatable so one of the most prominent ones they use is uh, push no uh, notifications, for instance, as an example, if you're, you get a WhatsApp message and your phone either rings or vibrates, how hard you find it to resist the urge of looking at your phone instantly. And, um, or um, there are, is another example on Snapchat. They have these so-called streak, streak functions where it if you interact with one of your contacts and send, I think, a snap every day, it creates a streak, which induces in you this, um, this uh, willingness or this wanting to keep that streak going. So you spend a lot of time sending snaps just to keep the streak going. And in turn, you um, stay on their, um, their platform and there are a variety of um, external triggers uh, that they use this can be also the autoplay function on youtube and netflix that a uh, video starts playing as soon as the other one uh, has finished to keep you engaged as long as possible or having um this refresh button on all of these uh, different media so there has been research linking this refresh function you have for instance on facebook or instagram to the same um, cognitive patterns that you see in a gambler at a slot machine this anticipation it builds up that when you press that refresh that you'll get new information and that you'll get a new surge of dopamine and these um, external triggers have been um, proven to to be very um, very effective in keeping you on uh, on their, those platforms. But in turn, they have also have had had a variety of effects on our our mind and our behavior. And um, in two thousand and eighteen. It was one of the turning points for this discussion as the World Health Organization, which has been in the media a lot lately for different reasons, had uh, acknowledged that gaming, um, a so-called gaming disorder, which um, pretty much acknowledged that there is a part, um, there is a possibility of being addicted to digital services here specifically for um, gaming, online gaming or other types of gaming. And I would like to, um, to uh, take your attention to this, um, 
this uh, extract from uh, their website, which uh, identifies um, this disorder as significantly impairing in, pers uh, in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, and other important areas of uh, functioning. And in analyzing this, um, this statement, I have come across three, uh, four very distinct um, areas where these digital services have started to impair our day-to-day -day life. And I um, have these four areas as socioeconomic, human interaction, mental health, and cognitive function. To start with um, socioeconomic, we have seen that um, uh, these services more and more are part of one giant company, for instance, uh, WhatsApp is part of Facebook and Instagram, which means that a couple of big, big tech companies have the ability and have your attention for a vast amount of um, amount of time of your day, which in turn influences a lot of what you think you uh, think you know the information information you gather, and in uh, in part on how you think. We've seen uh, the effects of this in the 2016 election in the US where social media shaped uh, the outcome or maybe shaped the outcome of an election. And so it is easy to, um, to see how strong this impact of having our attention for such a long time comes into play in this area. Moving along to human interaction, it has there has been a lot of research done to analyze the ways we communicate over digital um, over the digital medium uh, in comparison to how we used to do it in person. And we've seen that, for instance, here in uh, Zoom, you're able to see my face. So this is already a huge step up to only interacting via. Um, WhatsApp, where you don't see my facial expression, where you don't see me mimicking. And these are very, very um, important parts of how we as human interact with each other and how we are able to not only by words uh, communicate, but also through our body language and through our mimic and through our um, involuntary responses. And it has, uh, research shows that a lot of this human communication is being lost through only communicating through these uh, digital channels. It has also been proven in research that it has uh, these vast times or this overuse of digital medias has taken a toll on our me mental health. And loneliness and isolation. And I've, I think we live in a time where depression has been becomes so common that pretty much everyone is faced with it either personally or through friends or family. And we have to start asking ourselves, what is, um, where is this coming from? Are we just nowadays more, uh, more unhappy or are external factors such as um, digital addiction uh, inducing this in us? And, uh, lastly, uh, to cognitive function. Um, so, uh, so being digi uh, on digital medias a lot has been linked to people starting to try and multitask more. And moving away from a lot of people think that multitasking is something you should be good at and it is, um, it is uh, good to learn how to multitask. However, it has been proven that multitasking is only our brain being able to switch relatively fast between doing two different things, but not being able to do them simultaneously. And this um, brings a, a big like problem because um, it has also been shown that by multitasking, you never achieve the same type of excellency in the task you're performing as if you're only focusing on one task at a time. And so people have been uh, having issues with uh, focusing for longer periods of time and um, 
loss of creativity because they have um, another big part of this is that our brains are wired to have boredom. So times where they don't have external stimuli, which um, your um, phones give you all the time. And in that time of so-called boredom, that's the time where your brain repairs and starts to um, really um, strengthen those neural connections you make through your, uh, throughout the day. And we're losing that in, the, in that we're always engaging our, uh, our uh, neural cortex. And so, as you can see, there has been, uh, in some parts, some speculative um, problems and some in, grounded in research that have arisen from this uh, digital addiction we are experiencing nowadays. So a lot of, of I, for instance, thought, is it too late? to change this trajectory we're on now because um, in one part um, is, uh, is this just how life will be moving forward? Are those companies too powerful to change nowadays? And are people able to listen to the problem at hand and self-reflect if they are experiencing uh, any symptoms of digital addiction because um, it is really hard to admit at some point. And a huge part of solving this problem is that it has to come from society because um, analyzing the stakeholders from the side of the big three, namely Facebook, Google, and Apple, there is not much incentive for them to change because the business model they are running now is very effective and they are probably the most valuable companies on on the planet right now and so it is uh, it will be increasingly hard to just shift um, the focus on them and give them all of the all of the power to affect the change on their own and so analyzing this we have two other stake um, large stakeholders in this discussion and this would would one uh, on the one hand be our government and our society and so everyone affected using digital medias nowadays and so we really have to start and push big tech to uh, acknowledge that they are that we are um, aware of the problem and the these triggers that they're using and mechanisms to hold our attention and all of the neg negative downsides that are coming from this. In turn, not saying that all of the, um, our digital uh, world should go away because it brings so much benefit, but that it is regulated and doesn't keep us there. And one way to do that is that we as a people and the government try to move big tech from having most of their business model rely on ad revenue and trying to get them to find different uh, sources of profit, which doesn't um, build on having us being their little zombies throughout the day. And um, as a solution for this and for products that are, will be coming out in the future. I've identified three areas, which I think is really important to, um, to discuss. And this, the first one would be to diminish this attention-seeking environment they are creating nowadays to keep us on their platforms. That is to um, reduce or nullify push, noti um, push notification or make it easier for people to um, uh, turn them off and have more control over when their attention is um, on their phones and not, or to, it has been also, there has been research, uh, research has been done on having colored phones. So phones that have color and phones that have a grayscale. And ha it has been proven that a grayscale phone doesn't engage you as much as a colorful phone. So that could be another way to diminish this environment that they are bringing, uh, they are creating. 
Another solution would be to create labels as with most addictive uh, substances such as tobacco, alcohol, gambling. Um, we have quite strict and quite um, a lot of uh, labels in place. For instance, if you buy a pack of cigarettes, you'll always see a label on the package um, reminding you of the negative sides it has from smoking, which is not completely cutting off the industry of tobacco, but is um, regulating them into acknowledging the downsides and the risks it takes. And maybe implementing this in, so, uh, in services, digital services not, um, that we have today um, that acknowledge that they have this environment that uh, induces, uh, produces addiction and maybe labels that pop up after a certain time, a uh, certain amount of time has expired. Uh, I'll wrap this up really quickly. I'm sorry. And the last point would be to um, open up all of this data that is being mined by these companies to research to better understand this, uh, this problem. And so I would really like to open up this um, topic, which I've found very, very interesting to um, all of you. I'm really uh, looking forward to hear some of your thoughts and, and thank you that you all st um, stayed here to listen to me babble on. <laughs> thank you.